whole kid thing yeah so since i was a kid i always knew like i would have a, a family and get married young so like what i'm doing now it isn't a surprise to me i feel like in life you're born with what you're going to do and when it happens and when it comes into fruition and it becomes your reality it doesn't surprise you or you're not shocked because you knew this was going to happen like this was going to be your life eventually you just didn't know when so like for me like it's not a shock i feel like it's more of a it's more of something that helps build my character and confidence to know that what's inside of me you know is is of good and it's gonna you know come into fruition like i know it can if that kind of makes sense welcome back to another episode of mosaic minds podcast with your host jason and myself nick if you're new to the podcast be sure to hit that subscribe button and click on the bell. We have some exciting things coming up that you're going to want to get notifications to find out about. If you're listening to the audio podcast on one of the music platforms and you like our podcast, please help us out by giving us a five-star review with maybe a little bit of writing after it. In today's episode, we'll be interviewing Tramel Velez about his popular YouTube vlog. Tramel's vlog is a family vlog starring himself, his wife, DeAsia, and their adorable newborn daughter, Yeva. Make sure you also check out their YouTube channel called simply DeAsia and Tramel. We'll have all the ways that you can find them on social media, including the YouTube channel in the description, or if you're listening to the audio podcast, their information will be in the show notes. So enjoy the episode, and here is Tramel. Okay, so I'm here with Tramel and DeAsia from Tramel and DeAsia on YouTube. They are uh, vloggers up and coming. They've got um, quite a nice following and some very interesting videos. So I just kind of want to start out by asking Tramel, um, how did you how did you guys start doing this? Like, what made you want to get started on this journey, and what has what kind of opportunities has that brought you along the way? Yeah, I got my mouth wide open. I know y'all probably like close your mouth. First of all, thank you for uh, allowing me to be here. This is like a little like debut, um, little appearance. You know, many more to come. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited to be here. Thank you all for thinking about me. Um, so when it comes to the YouTube thing, okay, a lot of people don't know I actually have my own YouTube channel. Um, I started off when I was, I think I was a freshman in college. Yeah, I started my own YouTube channel because I always loved YouTube. Um, I had people that I watch like all the time. So I was like, I got personality. Like I can be a YouTuber, you know, why not? So let me jump in it. So I did it by myself. Um, it was a lot. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just throwing stuff on the internet. Some of the videos are embarrassing. I think I took them all down. So like you cannot go and find them. <laughs> so if you try to go and find a video, you is not going to find them. All right. You're not. So don't go on a scavenger hunt looking for them. But I took them down. Um, and that's pretty much it, but I always knew I wanted to do it. So time passed and me and Asia met, you know, we'll get into that, whatever. But so I told her like, you know, we should be like YouTube, we should do like a youth, little, little YouTube, a couple of things. So she was just like, okay, whatever. Um, and we fell into it. Um, and now we're, you know, actually in the thick of it. It's be like almost two years. Um, we actually are getting a following. Um, one time we were in Walmart and somebody recognized us yeah that was really cool it was really cool um so yeah that's pretty much where we are now so i always knew this is what i wanted to do um and this is the end goal ultimately i would say yeah yeah you guys have you get, like i said i've spent most of the last night kind of watching your videos uh -huh. and you guys have some really i mean you're entertaining you guys are fun thank to watch you. for sure i appreciate it thank you so much thank you so you so when you had you had your own YouTube channel and then you realized that it works better with uh when with you have a, a, a pretty female along exactly with you, right? of okay. course okay. of course gotcha all right so I I put together just a little kind of clip of some different things you know okay. to just kind of sum up a lot of it in okay. a little video so hopefully this comes out I haven't actually like tried to run it yet so. yeah I'm gonna close my mouth too because I'm like I feel all that, the AC in the room in my hey. mouth I'm gonna have a drum what's mouth. up <laughs> Come on. Okay. Okay. It's not difficult. You got it. All right. Okay, you ready? I was a child. Can we just count? Sneaky, my girlfriend and my door. Okay, I'm gonna count like Being this. grown. And I gotta look. Don't look down. Okay, okay, okay. Come on, come on. Here we go. Okay. What's up, DTV? It's yours truly, Tramel. Yours truly, DeAsia. And, and we're what? back like we never. <laughs> Now pronounced to you by the by the state of Texas and the power invested in me, Mr. and Mrs. Tramel Velez. You may kiss your bride. Okay. Oh, got it. Well, yeah, you want to see her? Yeah. Hey, girly. 
I got her gift set up here. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I cannot wait she open them. Y'all, I'm a horrible gift wrapper. Like, horrible. But anything for my baby, I kind of made it work. Try to make it look a little cute um, and things like that. I put the bow in a corner up there because it started ripping, so I tried to hide it instead of putting it in the middle. But, you know, we made it do what it do. But all right, let me get out here. <laughs> Seeing the evolution, it kind of make you a little emotional, ain't it? Yeah. Like, I don't know why, but it's like, it just really makes me emotional to see, like, we've grown a lot. And, like, we know that there's something deep down in us that's going to take care of us, meaning, like, we want to be our own bosses or like, you know, we just want to yeah. do our own thing. But looking at this, it's just confirmation to like something's happening. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I'm getting closer and closer to what I want in life. And sometimes it takes longer to get where you want to be. But you have to realize your moment and what's in your present is what's kind of like booting you up, you know, and making right. you, making you <sighs> adequate. I guess, right? Adequate? Yeah. Inadequate is like when you're not so adequate, I guess, whatever. Yeah, just building you up. So that, Well, and yeah. you, you guys are obviously passionate about it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's uh, to me, that's the only way that you can be successful in any business or anything that you do is if it's something that you're passionate about. Yeah. Tramiel, to me, it's like a time capsule. What was cool about that is it seemed like a long time, I guess, in the, in the thread of life, but small snapshots almost like still photography, but moving video. Talk to me a little bit about maybe what your next initiative is in that project that you currently have going on. Yeah, so ultimately, like, I I am a big thinker. Um, one thing with me and DeAsia, like, we balance each other because, like, I dream big. Like, I'm still, like, three years old, um, like, with a pull-up on and, like, a cape. Like, I'm like that I'm like that person in my head. And is more, like, logical. So, like, she kind of helps me, like, balance it out. Um, but, like, to answer your question, the end goal of what we're doing is – just to get traction and just to put myself and my family out there because i feel like that's the biggest thing for people to know you because it doesn't really matter how much money you have in life you know like it'll get you somewhere eventually but if people don't know you then you you're nothing pretty much you know so just getting yourself out there um seeing like you know what kind of business ventures that brings out um ultimately in life i kind of want to go back to where i'm from east chicago and kind of do something there um i'm really into like food as well so like an end goal is also like um like my own restaurant and things like that so ah, okay so, yeah. you, so you cook oh oh i throw it down okay i'm sure I that's cook. in some of the videos right i yeah. just i just didn't get that i, okay. I cook down when i tell you down like chicken bone home feet in the pot i cook down there you go there you go <laughs> I've I've always liked your uh, spirit and your uh, your sense of uh, having fun, you know, enjoying life. Mm -hmm. I think as you, as you get a little older, continue to capture that. You know, if I could give you just a small nugget, it's that. And then when you when you show your audience who you truly are, which you guys have done a good job in the clips that I've watched, um, that's what it's all about. So I think uh, being real, being true, and the, those business initiatives will come your way. Yeah, hundred percent. Sometimes I have to watch it because we could be a little too real. Like, you know what I mean? Like, also, like, the other day we were out and about, right? Me and DeAsia, we, we're not really wrapping our head around, like, what we're doing. I feel like to where when we go outside, we kind of have to be a little presentable, you know? So, like, when we take the extra mile to, like, look, you know, like, human beings, decent human beings to be in society, it's like we don't bump into nobody. But when we out and I got a dirty shirt on, I just got from the gym, I got sweat in my booty crack. Like, you can see it. It's just like, that's when I see everybody and their mama, their uncle, their auntie. So, it's like the other day, we were, we had just came from the gym. I literally had on sweats, like, with a stain in my booty. And, like, then we saw somebody and it's just like, Lord, like, why do I see people? You know, so it's like, sometimes it's a wheel, we're a little too real. You know, we got to. Got to bring you back in. Yeah, you got to practice for, for one day when, when you're not, you know, you got people putting you on TMZ because you're, you know, eating a hot dog with your hair going in every way. Exactly, direction. right? You're walking down the street. Insane. Like so yeah. you're saying it's a setup, man. It's the, a setup. The gym you go so, to is a setup. Look, so. it's a setup. The universe, whatever. They trying to get us. They trying to get us. Uh, the way I look at that, though, is I, I'm all about, Jason knows, like, I'm all about being real, right? I mean, you probably see that even, even, even at work, you know? So... 
if it if it comes back to bite me, it comes back to bite me. So I think that you guys will be more. Su- yeah, you may you may say something that you know isn't accepted worldwide from time to time, but I think that people respect you more whenever you're yourself and instead of trying to filter things out. You know what I mean? Yeah. But what what would you when you first started doing this and you were you were out and about? Was it awkward at first, like walking around with a camera? Like, did it feel like, oh my gosh, they're probably like, what? What are you doing? Yeah, you know? still awkward. Like, Deasia, when it comes to like recording in public, she's like, no, record on the phone. Do not take the camera in there. I'm like, it's okay. Like, we gotta get used to it. But recording at first, even like talking to the camera, it's weird because there's nobody there. So it's like. You have to really know yourself as your personality to know what you can bring to the table. So, like, it was really weird recording, especially in public, because people, like, stare at you. And, like, they're like, you know, like, what are you doing? But, like, now I, I whip the camera. I bust the camera out real quick. I don't care who's watching. Um, I'm just comfortable with it. It's like the camera is a person. And, like, I'm just communicating with that person and just being myself. Because when we first started, also, we didn't really show personality that much. Um, like, if you go back and watch our videos and, like, see how we, like, evolve, you can tell the comfortability with the camera kind of grew as well. So, Tramel, are, are you more of a pre-planner, kind of like, this is how I want it to go? Or are you more ad-lib or are you, or are you more just flow? I was, I would say I'm more just flow. Pre-planning, I don't feel like it really worked for me. Like, for example, my sinuses is draining, and I'm glad y'all got this mic cover. When I leave, don't smell the mic. Because, okay, just no, don't <laughs> right. try to smell the mic. I, see, his I, breath thing. I mean, that's normally what I do as soon as the episodes are over. You know, I go around sniffing so the no, mic. The mic good, it don't stink. My, si- my, my sinuses is draining a little bit, so I sound, a little, I sound like I smoked 40 pack of camels before I got here, but I didn't. Um, so, you know, if I was pre-planned, that would probably would be good because I would have caught up on my vitamin C before coming here, you know. Um, but, yeah, no, I, that was a long drawn out answer to tell you i'm not pre-playing i'm not at all i just in a moment i just do it so i got i got another clip i want to play and only this is really more for me and if i would have had time my plan was that i was going to buy a bottle of heineken and give it to you as a gift uh. <laughs> <laughs> because when i when i saw this like i was crying laughing because you chose for your this was your first beer right yeah first time ever, first time ever you had a beer, beer. <laughs> so you chose you chose the worst possible beer that you could ever choose. we did not know i mean it, it like it like you open it and it smells like cat piss although actually it smells a lot like skunk too which you pointed out in the video well we said we well, well i know yeah yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, I thought, yeah, so I thought it was funny that, yeah, when I was watching that, I'm like, yep, I remember the first time that, that I tried Heineken. All right, so I'm going to pull this up. Heineken. 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 Yeah. They pulled over the sink. You were smoking? You smell like me. Ew. I knew it. That, that smells like weed. Why you that's thought that? That's like weed, huh? I'm not drinking. We don't that. get high. I don't know. No. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> oh, that's... Okay. Why does it smell like like somebody just smoked and just? It smells like spit slob. They just they just spit slob. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that was disgusting. I would not recommend Heineken. Them commercials is lying. Now let me wait. Let me let me not say that because later future if Heineken want to do something, hey, it's the best beer in the world. I drink it all. I drink the whole bottle if they want to do something later in life. But as of now, yeah, right. If you're listening, Heineken, yeah, we we love your beer. If you're listening, if you're not, we hate I buy it. by the case, <laughs> twenty four pack a day. Tramel, I know archaeologists study Nick and I because we're so old, so much older than you, right? But uh, when I was speak for yourself, brother. When I, when I was uh, when I was when I was back, you know, drinking my first one, it was Zima, right? Nick, you remember Zima? I do remember Zima. It was so bad, Tramel, that you had to drop a Jolly Rancher in it at your liking just to make it taste salvageable but it's real cheap so at that age we did that so i just yeah. thought i'd kind of wow. casually mention that or whatever yeah that was what that was like the equivalent of you probably remember smirnoff ice right yeah that was probably the equivalent of something like that maybe not as as good as smirnoff ice. hey tramel yeah. so i got one for you so uh i, d- I don't want to talk at all about my family but i will mention that my family has different stuff that they like to do so capture for me maybe in a bottle how exciting it is to have uh, your wife being part of this initiative and enjoying doing a project together with the collaboration involved. 
Um, I would say I always knew I was going to have a family. Like, even, like, I was in, like, pre-K, like, kindergarten, like, telling everybody I'm going to get married when I'm young. I'm going to have a child. I'm going to have, like, I've been always this, like, since I was a kid. Um, and I always wanted to, like, bring my family along a process of, like, development in a way. So it's really cool to do it with my wife. Um, I would think it would it kind of keeps you brings you guys together because it's something that you're always involved in. Oh, too, yes, you know? yes, like, yes, yes, yes. Because you said... You look at your family like doing something. Look, I got to get better at this. Boom, boom. Try to make it work. Boom. Okay, yes. How is it doing? Yes. It's, it's great doing it with my wife because it's somebody I love, so I'm comfortable. Um, And then, oh, back to the whole kid thing. Yeah, so since I was a kid, I always knew like I would have a, a family and get married young. So like what I'm doing now, it isn't a surprise to me. I feel like in life, you're born with what you're going to do. And when it happens and when it comes into fruition and it becomes your reality, it doesn't surprise you or you're not shocked because you knew this was going to happen. Like this was going to be your life. Eventually you just didn't know when. So like for me, like it's not a shock. I feel like it's more of a, it's more of something that helps build my character and confidence to know that what's inside of me, you know, is is of good and it's going to, you know, come into fruition. Like I know it can, if that kind of makes sense. Do you think do you think you have like one main purpose in life or do you think that you have multi purpose? Like do you think that you know that people always talk about finding your purpose and there's all kinds of books about, you know, you there's like purpose driven life and you know, like finding all that kind of stuff. Do you think there's one grand um purpose or do you think that you have all kinds along the way? Um, I I don't like to ever put myself in a box, so I feel like I have more along the way, but in a in a nutshell, I feel like I do have one main purpose. And it's to show healthy relationship and how you can grow with the people that you love and make something out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like my my main focus in life or like what I was created for, like my purpose per se. And I'm still learning because I'm still young. Um, but right now it's to show a healthy family and like how you can build a business from a healthy family and have a good balance. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So, you so you, do you think um, as a... Um, Oh shoot! What I lost her. Is it Ye Yeva? Yeva, right? Yeah, Yeva. you said it right. Okay. okay. Uh oh, so, I'm gonna got to cash out you twenty dollars. <laughs> Look, you said it because people be saying Yeva and Yeva, and it's just like. <laughs> well, I've heard you say it before, but I had to. I had to. Yeah, All right, dude. Crank Look. the wheels. So as Yeva gets older, do you see her being a big part of this as well? I mean, I know she is now, but like, do you think? Do you see her being more like? More like uh, I I don't know I want to say that you're subdued but you're definitely he's definitely the outgoing right the extrovert out of the two of you do you see her being more like you I mean I know it's impossible yes no it's not impossible to say she got she got a little personality on her um already the other day Deasia was in front of the standing in front of the TV and she was on the couch watching TV and she kind of like started screaming and then when Deasia moved she stopped screaming so it was like she was telling her mother hey you're on the TV <laughs> and you're not made of glass so I need you to get on about the way. So yeah, she got a personality. I feel like she definitely will will be like me. Um, we do want two kids. I feel like one of them are going to be more like her and more reserved and quiet. But for this one right here, this first one, yeah, she gonna be like her daddy probably. Okay. Yeah, so you become the Yeva show at, at some point. At some point, yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Tramil, since I've known you, man, you've uh, you've always done a good job of being positive, joking around. I think, um, you know, I've mentioned this before, but one of my best qualities is putting a smile on somebody's face when their chin's down. So talk to me a little bit about what you do as far as um, staying internally optimistic, staying laughing, staying jovial, staying positive, seeing the vision for yourself in your own life, man. You got, you got a, I think you got a good rap on that. Loaded question. You can take that a couple different directions. Go ahead and shoot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say it's really important um, for me to always be happy but i'm really glad you asked that because i feel like a lot of people only know me like one side of personality like oh he's so outgoing he's always laughing this and this and that but like i do have times where like i'd be down for real i'd be stressed out like headaches if i smoke cigarettes i probably would smoke like for real like if i did anything else i probably would like do lines you know what i mean um joking but i'm saying like i do have moments to where like i do like get stressed and i'm not like this person that everybody sees like my wife knows at home sometimes um like i shut down and mostly and anything that happens, if I'm sad, if I'm upset, anything like I shut down, and I don't talk, um, which I need to learn how to not do that and communicate a little better. Um, but I do get down and a lot of people come to me for advice or always seek out like words of affirmation from me. 
And like, I don't get that in return. Like, yes, I have family and things like that. And like, I don't want to ruffle any feathers with like anybody thinking like, oh, they're not there for me because that's not where I'm coming from. But when you actually like put it together and it boils down, what I give out, I don't have in return. It's draining, it is. isn't it? Like I've been, I've played that role before too. Like I wouldn't say right now I am, but like in my younger days, you know, when I ran around with the circle of friends and all that, I I was it seemed like I was the one that got to hear everything, but um, you know, nobody really wanted to to hear it back. So yeah, it, it drains your energy, Jason. You know, you know what I'm talking I'm about. I'm guilty of that, and I agree with you. Yeah, sometimes you get to be the downloader. Sometimes you get to download it upon. So I, I definitely. Uh, definitely agree with that but i think it also plays in sometimes i feel like as human beings we get too caught up in ourselves and thinking what we should get in return when sometimes we're getting equivalent to what we think we should get but it's not presented in the way that we think it should be presented so i feel like that also comes to me as well it's like well sometimes you do get what you put out but it's just not presented in a way that you feel like it should be presented in and you have to appreciate that moment because each moment kind of connects to, to a bigger picture. You know what I mean? So I kind of have to deal with that too sometimes. Now, Tramiel, I'm going to throw you a left field question, man. I'm going to make you think a little bit. So we got one person in the room. It's the audience's objective to figure out who I'm talking about that could be, quote, unquote, younger than what he is. And then I have one person in the room on the left of me, with all due respect, that carries himself older than what he is. Not looks. I'm saying demeanor, um, polished with speech. Talk to me a little bit about that. We've talked about that. If I was guessing, I would say you're 8 to 10 years older, the way you carry yourself, the way you communicate, the way you're a winner in front of other people. Expand. Yeah, I would say I was forced to be an adult early on. I had a single mom, so she had to do what she had to do. She had to work. The word don't stop. You know what I mean? So ever since I was little, I was made to be older. Like, I've been cooking since I was, like, what, like, maybe seven, eight years old. Um, I, I was raised by like my grandparents as well. Um, like aunties, uncles around them a little bit here and there. Um, so like my mom had to work all the time and do what she had to do. So when it came to taking care of myself, she would tell me like, you're not going to be eight years old all your life. When are you going to be 18? When, when are you going to be 28? So she brought me up and she raised me as if she was talking to that grown person already. So even though I was sitting in front of her and I was eight years old in her eyes, I was already 18 or 28. So she, she wanted me to be very independent. Um, and I feel like sometimes it kind of gets a little back at her because my mom, you know, she wants me a little bit more, you know, to be like lovey-dovey a little bit more now that I'm a little older. Um, but yeah, so it it's the fact that she raised me very independently and I could do things about myself. So I feel like that makes me older. I have to think more about myself um, and things like that. So I feel like because how I was raised, it made me how I am now, very much older. Than much so to go back just a little bit, tell us how you and Deja met each other and kind of, you know, how, how you got to know each other and how that sparked. Cause it sounds like you guys were pretty much each other's first love. Yeah. We was each other's first. Yeah. Yeah. So it was really cool. So we met, we were 16 going on 17. Um, it was in Miss Tudor class. Shout out to you, Miss Tudor. Hey, Miss Tudor class. It was, it was math. Um, and the way that the desk was, they were set in fours. So it was like two people face to face like this and this, and then two people on the side. So it was me, it was this boy named Willie. It was his girl named Ariana, and then it was Deasia. So we all used to play. Do you guys remember like iMessage games? Like you can play like iMessage games, like Connect Four or like Marbles or yeah, Bank Call like or whatever. The, the p game ping or whatever. Yes, yes, yes. So we so we used to play that. Um, remember it? Like to me, that's still fairly fresh, right? Like, well, it's a little. I, old. I think he's calling us old man. <laughs> yeah, he's a little old. He, he's drinking. <laughs> I thought he was gonna say, "Do you remember like hands up, seven up, or something like that, or like uh, you know?" Got water. I guess that's haterade. Right? Yeah, a little bit. I guess so, huh? <laughs> so, um, so that's that's pretty much how it started, and I didn't know. That because I thought I got Deja Snapchat first, but she always tells me that didn't happen. I could have sworn I got her Snapchat first, but she said, you know, so the wife is always right, you know. So I didn't get her Snapchat, even though I think I got her Snapchat, but so um, I got her phone number. So we were playing the uh, the games and stuff like that. Um, and she had already like started liking me. Um, believe it or not, I've been this person like my personality since I was like in school. Um, I feel like it's just a little bit more amplified. I feel like now that I'm grown. Yeah, it's a little more amplified. But I've always been this person. So she kind of like fell in love with the person per se. And she liked me and I didn't know. And one day, um, it was New Year's going into 2017. Um, and I was in Tennessee with my dad and my stepmom and my um, siblings. And 
I had text, sent her this long text on Snapchat like, hey. <laughs> Oh, text message, not Snapchat? Okay, she corrected me in the back. She said it's text message, not Snapchat. Um, so I text her just like, hey, like, I've been thinking about you. And, like, I, I think I like you. I don't want to go into New Year without you, you know, baby, and all, you know, all that other stuff. Um, and then she read it. I saw that she read it because we had each other's uh, rare receipts on. And she didn't reply. So um, she like, left you on red. I'm, like, I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, I'm about to get rejected. Oh, New Year, this is crazy. This is diabolical. I'm like, oh, my God. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, maybe she needs some time. You know, I don't know. So then I get to go on her social media, looking at her story, like, what's she doing? What's she doing? What's she doing? So she was out and about. She was downtown in, like, the circle. You know, they do the lights and stuff like that. Um, so I was like, okay, she's out. But she still left me on red. So it was like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, and I turned to an hour. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, Dang, if she want to be my girlfriend, you could have just said that. Like, you didn't have to leave me on red. Now I don't like. I got. Now I got to put two and two together. So eventually, she texted me back, um, and it was reciprocated. She wants to be with me. So I was like, okay, whoo, thank you, Lord. I was like, I, you know, get rejected because I, I, I had this one girl that I really liked a lot, but, um, you know, it didn't turn out to be whatever. You know, so uh, we don't give each other no, um, uh, well, not each other, but you know. We don't give old people no camera time. You know what I'm talking about? So I ain't going to even say the name of the person. Um, but this is who I'm supposed to be with. But yeah, it was reciprocated. Um, and then I called my mom. And I was like, Mom, guess what? And she was like, what? I was like, I got a girlfriend. She was like, a girlfriend? She was like, you don't got no girlfriend. <laughs> I'm like, no. I'm like, Mom, like, I, I actually have a girlfriend. Like, I just text her. Like, we're, we're together now. So she was like, okay, whatever. You know, we, we, uh, we, uh, we'll see what happens when you get back to Indiana, blah, blah, blah. So... So yeah, we ended up getting back. We were on our first date. We went to go see uh, Hidden Figures. You remember that movie when it came out? <laughs> Hidden oh, Figures. No. Okay, you guys gotta do some research. Okay, look up Wait. Hidden Figures. I'm, I'm gonna. Okay, um, Hidden Figures. Hidden H I D D E N Figures. Not fingers. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Hidden Figures. <laughs> um. So it's with um Taraji P Henson, um Janelle Monae, and who else in it? No, not Viola Davis. I'm trying to put Viola Davis in the movie. Give her some extra money. I don't even think Viola was in that one. I don't even think about fences. But anyways, but yeah, so we saw Hidden Figures. Um, and it's like a, a movie about these black women who worked with NASA. Um, and they, they weren't given credit. It was in like segregation time and stuff like that. And then, true story? Yes, true story. Okay. And like eventually they got on top, got to work with NASA, all that. Um, I don't know why we were 17 going to see that movie because it was, it was horrible. I, I appreciate, you know, my black culture. But in that moment, I didn't know how important it was because I was like, this movie is trash. Like, why do we come and see this movie? Um, and then it was cold um outside as well the reason why i say that is because after the movie we walked to we were just dumb 17 years old in love cold i guess the, our love is gonna keep each other warm so we walked cold across the parking lot it was maybe like a 10 minute walk went to applebee's um eight yeah and that's it. ever since then we just we've been together that was a long story. So what did you think whenever he first said, hey, I, I want to do a YouTube channel together? Or was that kind of a part of everything all the way since you guys first met each other? I think we just talked about it, about doing it. I don't, I don't, can't remember all the way back then. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't think it was I don't think it was in the forefront of us. Like when we got like the reason why we got together yeah, to no, do YouTube. No, no. no it just came like, about years after like maybe like two we did years. in college yeah yeah so okay. we were together 16 17 18 so probably about like 19 yeah so we were together for three years first before we <laughs> crazy man i, I man i would have saved me so much grief if i could have just met my high school sweetheart and you know what i mean yeah like, three three so it's kind of strategic <laughs> he was already together with you you were vibing with him and then he dropped on to you that you were going to do the youtube right yeah so you can't really say no right <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah but, good uh, stuff good stuff though well our freshman year in college as well a lot of people don't know we kind of took a a sabbatical a little bit um on a relationship because we just you know well it was mostly i guess me but i just like going to college i don't know it was long distance and stuff so i didn't think it was going to work and things like that um but it, we ended up you know still being together and it worked Aww. so i feel like a lot of people don't know that they just think we just went through the straight you know so we had a few bumps a little bit like when we were growing into adulthood just Did you break to, her heart tramel I did <laughs> for a minute. I did for a, for a minute. I did. Dang. How long? How long? And then they gonna, people gonna say, "Wait, can I say the N word?" I was gonna say. Like, <laughs> they gonna say niggas ain't shit. That's they gonna say. They gonna say we thought we were rooting for you. You know, we thought you were the one. Niggas ain't shit. Okay, I understand. I can take it. I broke a heart. Yeah. You know, I didn't think I would be that guy, but I guess I did it. You know. Okay. How long was this the sabbatical? Uh. Almost a year. 
Yeah. Who initiated the return, started. like the re Okay. Yeah. Okay. So she, nice. like, it was over the summer. Like, we were hanging out, and she basically told me, like, we keep hanging out. We're getting back together. We're getting back together. Basically, she didn't give me no choice. She was like, you keep wanting to be around me for what? So if you want to be around me, you want to hang out, then we need to get back together. So I was like, all right. So, yeah, we've been together. And then, oh, I had already got you a promise ring before we went to college. But, yeah. So, but, yeah, yeah. That, that was kind of. But, yeah, we got back together. I, it probably is in the videos, but I did. If, if it is, I didn't see it. But how did how did you propose? Um, I proposed. Shout out, shout out to my friend. Shout out Lauren Robinson. Is it, a, is it in one of the videos? Yeah, it's in the video. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Shout out Lauren Robinson. Shout out Michaela Tony. Shout out um, Imani Pumpkin. I love you so much. Um, but yeah, so they helped me. Um, I proposed in a hot air balloon. Get, oh my gosh, man! You are just—you're making us guys look awful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was in the higher It was at my college. Um, so basically, we had like um, what is it called in the in the fall? Homecoming. We had homecoming, and I was really cool with the um the administration staff because I work in administration. Um, I guess I I, I do got pull. I, I got pool. Low key, now that I think about yeah, it, I got pool. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm always set in high places. You know, the Lord be working. But yeah, so I worked with admissions. Um. And like different kind of administrative people, um, so they loved me all around campus because I was involved in a lot as well. So I was I was pretty known a little bit by the like the faculty. Um, so one of the faculty, his name was Romero. He was like, um, "Hey, like I heard you, you know, you want to propose?" He was like, "We actually have a hot air balloon coming to campus." He was like, "Why don't you do it in the hot air balloon?" And I was like, "Okay." All right, you know, we can do that. And then we have luminaries. Like, you know, we put the sand in the bag and, like, you light it and stuff like that. So he was like, so what we can do is, um, you know, do, like, marry me. You know, then my friend Imani, um, she was uh, in on it, too. She was like, yeah, you know, we can do marry me um, with the luminaries on the ground. So then when you go into the hot air balloon, you go up and she see it on the ground. My girl Imani, she helped, she, she helped me a lot. Um, that's my girl. We're, like, siblings almost. That's, like, one of my closest friends. Um so yeah, we kind of did that, figured that out. I bought a ring, did all that. Um, the day came, so I told Deasia like, "Oh, we're going to go into like a faculty appreciation event because, um, like, since I was involved in so much, she she believed a lie. You know what I mean? So like, um, I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm, I'm getting an award because I do so much on campus and I'm involved in so much." And she was like, oh, "Okay," and I was like, "I'm only able to bring like one person, so I just chose you to come." And she was like, oh, "Okay, cool." So she think we about to go to this event. Like we done got dressed up and everything. She had makeup, everything. I made, I made sure. I was like, "You got to do your makeup, you got to." You know what I mean? So we did all that, and then it was the high air balloon, and she was like, "Oh wow, oh my god, high air balloon, we should do it." And I was like. I was like, yeah, come on, let's do it. And she was like, it's a line. It's people. And I was like, yeah, it's okay. We, we can cut the people. You know, we could just get in the line. Whole time she didn't even know, like, it was, you know, made to, to look that way. So everybody was in the line. We cut all the people. We went up um, into the hot air balloon. And then my friends, Lauren and Imani, was in the hot air balloon with us. And they were like, hey, turn and look. So she looked. And it said, marry me in luminaries. And then I was like, will you marry me? Wow. See, I always tell people that the whole movies have totally screwed up relationships because you know people watch movies and they're like oh this is how it should be you know but but in reality it's not that. however it almost seems like that between the two of you that you are almost living out this you know rom-com kind of yeah kinda thing, right yeah. i mean mm -hmm. that's pretty cool yeah that's it pretty is cool. yeah it's really cool and i feel like it's important for us also to be real because I feel like a lot of people see that and think like, oh, it's just a perfect relationship. You know what I mean? Um, not saying that we go, we don't go really go through anything. We might have disagreements here and there, but it's not a big of a deal. Um, but just to know, like, even though things might look so perfect, you still have a person to work on. Like, I have traits about my personality that she doesn't like that I got to work on and vice versa. So we're trying to, you know, live a life of perfection but that really doesn't exist you just try to live what you think in your head is perfect for you you know what i mean so like even though like i said we have those perfect moments quote unquote we still are working on ourselves in this marriage well i'm probably not the most obvious person to give advice on marriage but uh but if i had one piece of advice to give it would be to never stop dating each other never stop pursuing each other you know because i think that's where it falls flat is when you get comfortable and it's like yeah you know i don't i don't need to shower for a couple days and you know i don't uh oh <laughs> you know, you know I don't, <laughs> No, 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 it's different when you have a new girl. Right, right. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, you, like you still, you still want to like do the same kind of stuff that you did before right. you were married. You know, like you still want to. 
you, you want to go on dates and you know do, yeah, yeah, yeah stuff stuff like that yeah not losing yeah. like the the sexiness of it all yeah keep it spicy yeah keep it spicy you know? yeah hundred percent no shame in going to the lion's den exactly you know, or, or, or wherever yeah we've yeah. been having especially like having a newborn like being spicy and all that you know the intimacy you get really creative because. The baby is always crying, and when she, when when you got some plan, she want to be woke. She don't want to go to sleep. She she want a daddy. She want a mama. Then that night she act like she don't want a mama, so she want a daddy. So it's like just go to sleep. Like I'm, we got stuff we trying to do together. Yeah, we trying right. to make sure we keep it intimate. Yeah, it, and yeah, yeah, so it, you get creative. You just gotta think what to do, when to do it, and you gotta be quick. You don't got enough time nowadays, so you know you just gotta just try to get it how you can get it. <laughs> You got to in and yeah, out. You got to be quick. I, I, I'm picking up what you're throwing Yeah, down. exactly. I, I, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and we want two. So it's like, all right. But hopefully they can occupy each other. So that way when they get older, we can just yeah, be like. Just, just put them in a little play play. Right. You know, play with each other. some matches. You know, sit down, and watch SpongeBob, <laughs> Scooby-Doo, some. <laughs> I look at uh, the camera being a, um, what does an artist paint with? It's a, a paintbrush. There you go. And a canvas. Mm -hmm. Open canvas, open paintbrush. Talk to me a little bit about when the lights are on or the camera's on, how you just flip that switch and kind of go into quote unquote what you're filming for that for that episode or for that for that audience. Yeah, I feel like it's it's very it comes naturally. Also in high school I did a show choir, so I feel like that kind of plays into the part of like you got to put on like once you get on yeah. the stage overact yeah or, or if yeah. not you're gonna get yelled at because them directors in Ben Davis High School when I tell you they didn't play about that show choir. They didn't play. So when you get on that stage, you better act like you want to be there and look like you want to be there. So I feel like it kind of plays into what I do now. When the camera turns on, I know, like, first of all, ain't nobody going to watch you if you're boring. They, they are not going to. Your watch time is going to be zero. You will never get monetized, okay? So if you're boring out there, figure out what you need to do and do it. Get some personality. I don't know. Take some glasses. Take some acting classes. Do something. So that's one. They're not going to watch you if you're boring. Um, also, if you are not relatable. Because people, they connect with stuff that they feel is, is like a second home to them. So if you're not relatable, you're too uptight, you don't show that you're like a real person, they're like, no, this isn't this isn't it. You know what I mean? So just You're exactly right. Yeah, That's yeah. what I liked about your videos so much was because, you know, like, I felt like I was hanging out at the Indians game with you guys. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like, just kind of, it's like, oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So if, you, if you're personable and you have some sort of personality and you have something, some kind of entertainment within you. I feel like you'll 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 have a good stride in life, you know, when it comes to you know being in front of a camera if that's what you want to do. Um, but yeah, yeah, even if it might take longer than others, you know, everybody has their own journey. So eventually, you'll get there. You know, seems like a, a lot, especially maybe not as much now, but especially like your your age group, maybe maybe a little bit younger too. Like that's that's a dream of a lot of people is to be a, you know a YouTube star, a vlogger, or, or whatever. So would you say that's something that is not for not not that not everybody could succeed but would you say it's something that's not for everyone like is yeah. that a, is there a personality type that i feel that like you have there, to have? there is a personality type um we're just getting started so it's like we ain't big per se or well known um but also you have to you have to define what's big to you like, like you're right you can't compare you can't compare like you can't be like oh i want to be like a b and c and they're well known and people know them in japan and it's just like it's okay. People don't got to know me in Japan. They can know me in Kansas. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? If they know me in Kansas and Indiana, it's like I, I spread it somewhere. So you have to define what's big to you um, and then go from there and stop comparing and looking at other people's journeys. Um, it is a personality type, though. Like I said, you have to be some some sort of entertaining to watch and have some kind of storyline within yourself that captures people's attention. Um, and yeah, so no, it's, it's not for everybody. Sometimes I think like is it even for us if i'm being honest you know because it's like it's such a slow kind of uphill battle that we're on um but i have moments like these where i'm like something's coming out of this you know what i mean yeah sure it don't matter if i'm a hundred years old you know hope not lord look not hope i ain't a hundred but it don't matter like when it comes but i know something comes out of it eventually think about this too i mean like late let's say you know 20 years down the road let's say that this isn't your end game you end up doing something way better right so 20 years down the road, I think this would be a pretty cool thing for your kids to be able to go back and watch, you know, like just like my, our parents showed us like home movies or whatever. Well, now, you know, you can go back and watch some of these old YouTube videos and they're like, wow, you know, I can kind of see myself growing up, you know, so I think that's really cool. Yeah. Tramel, this is a soundbite. The way we try to look at it is, is we're your mouthpiece for that segment of X in time. So I think uh, I think your audience sees you in a full light. In all the lights that you've had in some of your videos, you know, you're kind of bringing that together because 
I've never seen you before. I'm watching this X amount of segment and getting to know you, you know, seeing some insight of what drives you. So you seem like you wake up happy. Talk to me a little bit about that. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a follow-up question of that. So it seems like when you walk in and I see you early there at, at work, you seem to be disposition happy. Is that the case or is it not the case? Um, I would say to a certain extent. Now I do when I wake up I do got energy I ain't gonna lie I be loud in the house you know I I be up I be wide and woke I be on fire. Now going to work it brings me down. I'm ready to go to sleep take a nap. I don't want to be there. I, I I got an end goal in what I want to do with my own life and I feel like sometimes work gets in between that. But at the same time I'm not my own boss so I'm gonna take my ass to clock in. You know what I mean? I can't make my own money yet so I got to do that. So I just do what I need to do. Um, but to answer the question, no. I'm not always happy because when I get to work, wherever I work at, it don't matter where I work at. I just be like, oh, I don't want to be here because I know, you know, I got goals in my life that I want to succeed. And I feel like this is not helping me because somebody else is my boss, mm -hmm. you know, making money for somebody. It's like else. I'm making money for somebody else. That, that's literally it. You know, even if they gave me a 5000 raises at work or if I just like loved anybody, just for example, I still would have that oomph, like mm, I'm somebody else's uh, employee. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So there's a follow-up question? I was just going to follow that up with kind of a random question because I had to come up with a follow-up question because I forgot <laughs> my original one, right? Oh, okay. You know, so right. uh, what's your musical inspiration, man? I hear you singing and belting out tunes from yeah. time to time between the cubes or whatever. What's your uh, what's a music star or two that you look up to or uh, mm -hmm. think has some game? So, yeah, I actually – I really can sing. I really like singing. Um I joke around a lot on YouTube, but I, I'm I'm very uh, strategic. You know, sometimes I do put a little real little little sound. Oh, on, I can tell. You know what I mean, sing. just yeah. so just so somebody if they fumble the crowd, they like, oh, he can sing. You know what I mean? It's like, let's see if he can really sing. You know, so I kind of give myself a little room for people to kind of wonder, like, oh man, maybe he can sing as well. I do that on purpose, you know, because I love music. Hey, if if I'm a music recording artist, we can do that too. You know what I mean? Um, when it comes to music inspos, well, I grew up in church. Um, I self taught myself how to play the drums. Um, I've been playing drums since I was like maybe like five or six. Play the drums. Play the drums. I had a, a, we grew up in a family church. My granddad, and my grandma were pastors. Um, we had a family a family church. Almost low key, everybody in my family probably can play the drums. Um, they they made us kind of get on instruments, like because they didn't have musicians. So it was like, hey, get on the piano. And it's like, okay. So, Learn this. Yeah, so we're going to play the piano. So <laughs> That's what we need to do. It was kind of like, hey, Tramel, get on the drums. You know what I mean? So I was self-taught. So I've been playing the drums. And then also, like, my mom, um, she was, like, the praise and worship leader. So, like, she grew up singing. So I grew up singing my mom sing. Um, she had um, inspirations to be, like, a singer one day as well. So I kind of, like, I guess that just fell on me somehow. Um, so I grew up in church. Um, I, we weren't allowed to listen to secular music either. Like, we were strict. Like, church, like, I go to church friday wednesday friday saturday sometimes sunday people call it seven day adventist but we don't call it that i don't know if you ever heard of that before go to church on saturday per se um when the sun go down on friday we can't watch tv uh you gotta watch like some some uh td jakes or something or something like that some tbn um all the way to saturday when the sun go down then you can watch tv tbn oh my god yeah. shoot me you, you uh, no, that's old right <laughs> i grew up around old people so they was watching tbn um you know the commercial with the miracle water you ever oh seen? yeah, yeah. You got ben, like Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn. And, I grew yeah, up watching those, Benny Hinn. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. T D Jakes, Juanita Bynum, all them people. So um, you know, so I always loved music. Um, and my first inspo was Beyonce. Um, I used to sneak and watch her music videos on. Uh, you remember on demand? You can watch the TVs on on demand. Um, I used to sneak and watch those because if I was caught watching those, the way Beyonce was dancing, I probably got in trouble. So um, I would sneak and watch that. Um, so my first love for music was Beyonce. Um, also it kind of trickled down to Jasmine Sullivan. I really love her. Um, let's see. Those really are like the two heavy hitters. Tori Kelly's great. Um, um, who else I listen to? That's pretty much it for like mus musicality. I feel like gospel music though is a great foundation for anybody that is seeking, you know, to be a musician yeah, or anything like yeah. that. Because it, I mean, it, it gives you, it definitely gives you like the principles when it comes to that kind of stuff. Cause I also grew up in a, church household we didn't go saturdays and we didn't have to turn off the lights <laughs> but uh <laughs> but, I, but mondays S sunday sunday morning sunday evening and then wednesdays and then when i got a little older than than youth group mm -hmm. so i can kind of i can kind of relate there and we weren't allowed to 
do certain things either like we couldn't watch the simpsons yeah. or like harry potter well that's oh well we couldn't uh, watch uh, harry potter i wasn't around whenever i was oh so you're that kid, old yeah. i'm that old wow yeah yeah. Jesus wow, Christ. indeed. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> well, yeah, we couldn't watch them Harry Potter all that because my grandma was like, that is witchcraft. Of the devil. That is yeah. sorcery work. There was stuff like that, like Smurfs. It uh, wasn't my parents, but my uncle. I remember him being like, Smurfs, that, that's really? evil. Because, you know, like you had the wizard and, yeah, and, and all that stuff. Yeah, and, but even stuff uh, like, even, um, do you guys know what Bad Girls Club is? It used to be on Oxygen. It was like reality TV. Uh, yeah, I do remember. Yeah, yeah me and my I, cousin, we used to sneak and watch Bad Girls Club too because, like, my granny used to be like, "Y'all don't need to be watching this. They cussing, they fighting, and, and what did know. that make you want to do? Oh, we kept watching watch it. More, right? I remember one time we we lied. Lord, I'm so sorry. We <laughs> lied because we didn't want to go to Bible study because Bad Girls Club reunion was coming on. It was Mexico. Bad Girls Club Mexico. <laughs> Mexico is the best season. I'm telling you, with Erica. And all of them, they're the best. So so we lied and was like, oh, we got a lot of homework to do. We can't go to Bible study. So, you know, my granny was like, okay, whatever. Boom, do your homework. So we we um, went to the front room. She had a front room. So we watched TV. We had TV loud because we kept the door open to also look at the front door so we see when it was coming. So, yeah, we watched the whole season. They pulled up. We almost got caught, but it went off. So we caught everything. But, yeah, we lied and didn't go to Bible study to watch. And did Bible they know about this? Like, did you tell no, them No, they don't know about this. Oh, okay. Well, I'm grown now. I can't, I can't get a whip. <laughs> I'm grown. I got my own child. Can't nobody whip me now. So I'm grown. But, yeah, so even stuff like that, we couldn't watch. I grew up around, like, well, my family tried to be conservative a little bit. But, you know, no family is perfect. So, you know, we, we got a few people in my family who, who get lit. But for the most part, they tried to be more conservative. Well, that's exactly why I've said this multiple times, but that's why I I don't I purposely don't shelter the kids because I know your first instinct when someone says don't do something is it makes you more curious yeah, and makes you, do it. makes you want to do it. And so, you know, being, you know, and, and by the way, you know, I love my parents. They were great parents. So I'm not. But but I mean, like um, being kind of kind of sheltered, you know, as soon as I turned 18, I'm like, woo. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, were, yeah, I want to try it all. Uh-huh. I want to do all the, all the things. And so I, I, I would rather that the kids get, at, you know, get some of the curiosity out of their system now while they still have <laughs> a safe haven as opposed to, you know, when they turn 18 and, and can literally go do whatever, whatever they want. Whatever yeah. they want I feel like it's a good balance, too. Like, I, I, I didn't do that much, but I did have a few blackouts in college. I ain't going to lie. Like, I woke up like, oh, I'm in my dorm. I don't know. How, last time I remember, I was in Muncie. How did I get back <laughs> to my door? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I had a few moments like that, but luckily, like, I got Well, we know you didn't have beer until recently. Exactly. So, I mean, it I couldn't grew, have been. I, I, I <laughs> went off the head drinking hard, like Crown, Malibu, <laughs> Ciroc. Like sk- skipping over yeah, that. Yeah, I just, I, I hit the ground running hard. I think a parenting 101 on that to what I've seen is, or what I've tried to accomplish is, is. It's really tough to raise a child and be perfect, not around any riffraff, but it's very easy to keep them away from riffraff. So I'm not saying there's value in hanging out with bad people, but what I'm going to say is I think there's, I think there's um, value in being middle of the road. Well, and I know you're spiritually grounded. That's great. That's, that's what it's all about is knowing that right from wrong, um, now I can say no to that making your own decisions. I think there's value in that. And I think, I think you know that cause we've talked about that, right? Mm-hmm. We know, we know that it's important to have that sense of, um, staying out of trouble, knowing the fine line, but also, you know, you're going to, you're going to have some blips on the radar. I mean, I don't want to be too personal, but I lost three friends before I was 19. So that shaped my life to, to stay more narrow than what I did previous to 19, if that makes sense. So I think that's uh, that's exciting. So, um, Talk to us a little bit about Tramel. Where can we find you? I guess if we're looking for you online, um, with all due respect to you, hopefully this hits some new audience for you. But where do I find you? What? Yeah. Where are your projects? What are your platforms, etc.? So Instagram. My name is capital T, as in uh, tortoise. And we'll get all this. S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-
copy and paste it and put it so i'm on i'm on instagram i'm on youtube we'll be on tiktok we gotta get on tiktok a little more but i don't know they passing bills if it's gonna be up if it's gonna be down i don't know what they doing we gotta ride it while it's hot though you know right while it's hot so while it's hot going go ahead to that tiktok then dtv fam it should be um so yeah what's that yeah youtube instagram that's pretty much really really it tiktok all the the social all the socials yeah. yeah Yeah. I know it's a sports term, but I tip my cap once again to have a, something going for the family. I think it's awesome to have a foundation of a strong family to get along. It was nice hearing your story. It's inspirational that you're doing stuff together. You're building stuff. And um, I, I think what I'm going to tell you is when you get that opportunity, um, Eminem says it, but it's a, it's a you only get one chance, right? I'm, I'm not going to butch the lyrics, but I think what I'm going to try to say is, is like when you get that light dropped on you and you have that opportunity – my advice for you is go for it. Go for it. You know, I'm almost 20 years older than you, and there's a few things in my life that I passed, and I'm not displeased with where I'm at currently, but you also have to realize that if you get that opportunity, go for it. Um, so wrap us up with maybe um, what you're going to do at that moment when you do get that opportunity from what you're currently doing in life. Yeah, 100%. Also, when you made the uh, the statement of, you know, being around certain crowds actually beneficial per se, you know, versus what you think is good which, versus what you think is bad. I feel like I got a good combination of both because my dad, um, he was he, he lived like a street life, per se, just to keep it PG. Um, and my mom later at 24, you know, started going to church and living more like and uh, like a Christian per se lifestyle. So I've had both growing up. I've seen both. I've seen christianity life and i've seen street life so i'm a perfect combination of both so i feel like i I definitely agree with what you're saying it's good to be exposed to all those things and because i am exposed to those things whenever i do get a moment of opportunity to expand my family because it's not just me i'm not doing this for just me i'm doing it for my family when i get that moment i'm going to know how to take it and i'm going to know if it's a genuine moment because growing up with my dad I see how like the street life can be. So I know a genuine situation, you know what I mean? Um, versus a fake situation. Um, and just because money get thrown around doesn't mean it's good money. I feel like now where I am in my life, I appreciate, like I said, the slow ride up because being younger, when we're first starting this, I feel like I would have just took any and everything. If it's hot, if it's dropping, I'm taking it. But I got to also think, like I said, money, all money is not good money. You have to know where the money is coming from. I can say no to something without a problem. It doesn't matter if it's thousands of dollars. If I don't feel like it's beneficial to me and my family, it's a no. So I feel like that kind of just sums that up. You know, I feel like I'm going to know what's real and what's not and kind of just take it from there and, and grow my family. One last thing. I noticed whenever I was, you know, stalking your social media stuff, <laughs> I noticed that uh, you do photography. Oh. Is, is there, if, if somebody wanted to hire you to do that, is there a way that they can get a hold of you yes, for that? Yes, yes. Um, I actually really love taking pictures. Um, I'm actually taking it serious now. I really didn't take it serious, but I feel like, you know, why not? Um uh, I also um, I just did my first wedding It was my auntie's wedding I saw that Yes it was beautiful Good But job. don't ask me to do another wedding Nobody I'm not doing no weddings It was too much I was running around I was hot and I was sweating um, So I'm not doing another wedding Now if you go on pictures Somewhere in your wedding attire I got you Okay, so couples, graduates, whatever you want to do, whatever you're doing in life, if you got press on nails, you got wig business, food, you a cook, whatever Personalized <laughs> pictures only Hit me up on Instagram, DM me, 50 pictures, $100. You know, that's what I'm doing right now. Um, so I'm, I'm, that's the cheapest in the city you're going to find. So go ahead and book me. Oh, it would be good to do, like, pictures for dating profiles. Dating profile picture. I'm telling that'd you. Be great. That'd be really if you, good. If you tied against swipe left, swiping left, swiping left because your picture's ugly, <laughs> hit me up. We can get you a good headshot. So he you will can, make it right. So we can, yeah. So they can swipe right. <laughs> no more swiping left. Don't ask me to do a wedding, though. No more wedding. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Tremel and DH. I appreciate you guys coming out here. This is a lot of fun. And I'd like to do it again sometime. Yeah, so. I'm open. All right. Let me know cool. and I'll be here. Sounds good. All right.